If I ever release a, a squatting program, I'm going to call it Sub 50. Uh, the name comes from my belief that to get stronger in the squat, you have to spend the majority of your time with Sub 50% of your one rep max weights. Uh, now I know 70 to 85 is something kind of like the community has agreed upon after doing research for, uh, in the Russian kind of system. Um, four Olympic cycles, uh, you know, were, were taken uh, from the best lifters in Russia. Um, and scientists kind of looked at the training logs of the best kind of gold, silver and bronze medalists um, in weightlifting. And they took all of their journals and they worked out that the majority of their time they spent between 70 and 85 percent. That's kind of the agreed upon thing. Um, but I don't think any of those dudes squatted every day. Most of those dudes squatted three to four times a week or something along those lines, not every single day. So I've tried that. It doesn't work for me. Uh, when I take 70 to 85% and plug it into a uh, squat every day, it is plateau central. Um, so every single time I look back at, the, uh, at my training log, of my training log, and no, I'm not a gold medalist or a bronze or silver, or I have a whole squad behind me and potentially PEDs, all of that stuff. I don't have any of those things. But when I do squat every day, unlike those guys, when I squat every day and I tried that, it doesn't work. But when I look at my training log and I look at what I've done in, you know, in the last 50 million days that I've, that I've squatted every day, every single time I did high reps, I got better. Now, when I say high reps, I'm talking about like lots and lots and lots of repetitions not stuff like you know five to ten that's not high reps to me high reps to me is like 10 and above um, because 10 and above weight usually means that you can use weights that are really light and you can bang out a lot of volume you can't bang out a lot of volume with with heavy sets of five you would just get murdered um, so sub 50 is going to be the name of my program that i finally release um, when i kind of work out what what the best recipe is for people that want to squat every day that comes from the idea that I believe that the majority of your time should be spent with sub 50% of your one rep max. So if your max is 200, you're spending at most, the majority of your time, you're spending with 100 kilos and below, um, even up to 0% of your one rep max, i.e. body weight. Um, that's kind of what's worked for me. That's what I'm doing right now. Um, and I feel great. Uh, my hips feel great. Uh, the tendons feel unbelievable with, with light work. Um, so I think that's... That's the, the key to moving forward. However, I didn't say all you do is sub 50. In the sub 50 program, I think I'm gonna include daily training maxes. Now, that's gonna mean basically all the stuff that you do above 50% is gonna be very, very minimal. It's gonna be like single sets of three, two, and one. And you're always gonna finish the day with a heavy daily max. Now, the heavy daily max is not, you know, blow a couple of hemorrhoids out and, and, and blast blood out of your nose. That's not a daily max, that's a true max. Um, what I'm talking about is a comfortable, nice speed training max where the weight's heavy enough for you to kind of brace correctly and kind of mimic, you know, the real stuff. But you're really around kind of 85 to maybe 90% of your true, true maximum. That's what I want out of the daily training maxes. Um, once you hit that training max, then you drop down, down to 50% and then you bang out a million repetitions as, as you see fit. Now, as you see fit is up for me to kind of work out. Um, right now I'm doing every other day, uh, I'm, I'm kind of alternating between 100 kilos, 60 kilos and 40 kilos um, and I'm kind of doing a total of 100 reps, sometimes even more. Um, on top of all of that, uh, I've introduced a second training session uh, kind of before sleep, kind of in front of the TV with the family where I'm doing bodyweight squats to a chair. Um, that is purely to get blood in there, uh, to work on the tendons. Um, and to work on kind of the structures involved where there's no actual loading it's just purely kind of going through the motion and getting blood in there um, Some have, have said to me that's too much work um, to me. That is not too much work because um, This is like, you know going for a ride on the bike. Um, you're just getting blood in there uh, Now it is hard work as in you're working hard But it's not heavy work as in your central nervous system is going to get fried You're going to kind of lose sleep and all of that um, my legs have been feeling fluid as anything. I think I've gained some uh, range of motion. Uh, the bottom of my squat feels better only because I'm spending more time in the squatting motion. Uh, the weird thing is I also feel my ankles have kind of released a little bit as well, um, which makes me think a whole lot of thoughts, man. I have met some dudes in my life um, who have rarely squatted in their life, who are taller than me, longer femurs than me, and they can squat perfectly upright. Um, their ankles are mint. Some of these guys are cyclists. Some of these guys are soccer players. Some of these guys are runners. 
Um, and uh, uh, for the longest time, I've kind of thought to myself, what the hell is going on? Look at the size of that femur and look at him fold over into a perfect squat. Um, I'm starting to believe that I think there's a link between reps, as in running reps, uh, just reps in the hips, hip flexion, hip extension, hip flexion, hip extension, internal rotation, external, just lots and lots and lots of reps through that kind of hip joint um, that does something to the body. Lots of reps through the ankles, just lots and lots and lots of reps. I think that's the stuff that kind of releases joints. Um, I'm also thinking about my clinical experience seeing physiotherapists work with people that have had strokes, who have had kind of like, you know, frozen limbs because they've been active in bed. And all they do, man, they just get into, get into those rooms. If you are a physiotherapist, you might jump on and give me a comment. About, but I've definitely seen you guys do this where you kind of go in and you grab people's legs that are in bed. They have basically lost function of their limbs because of the stroke or whatever the case might be, trauma, car accident, something like this. And they just kind of pick their knee up off the bed and they just literally passively just get that joint moving. Uh, the patient is not doing anything. It is just somebody else moving their limbs for them. Um, I remember, you know, uh, when I was on the wards and I would see this readily, um, I would ask, you know, what the point of this is, and it's just, just to get the joint moving, just to get that synovial fluid moving about. Um, there's plenty of research to say that this is good for them. So when I take all of that sort of stuff and I put it in, in, in kind of in my mind, together I'm like maybe there's something to that the joints just want to move and that doesn't mean you have to load up freaking 70% or 85% for it to be a movement even passive freaking movement if you are a prince if you're a freaking king and you got like servants around just if you don't want to be screwed moving just get somebody to move your limbs for you I mean that's silly as hell but what I'm trying to say is movement is key movement is medicine I want to put freaking tattoo that on my forehead because that's how much I believe in it and I and every so often I get reminded that this is the key so this second training session, it's not like a training session that you guys think that I'm just kind of going to war. It is basically a movement session. Um, that's basically what I'm at. So this sub 50 thing that I'm kind of working on, a lot of you guys have said, oh, can you give me a program, you know, that I can kind of follow along and I can kind of mimic what you're doing very much. So for the last 560 odd days, I've literally just been on an experimental conveyor belt where I've kind of played with ideas, played with variables. Um, I've kind of ran away from uh, conventional thinking. I've been brave enough to be like, let's test all of this. I'm not taking anybody's world, anybody's word as, as truth. I'm going to test and see for myself. Um, what we're doing here is weightlifting. <laughs> it is very easy to experiment. Just do whatever you want to do and see what effects it has. This is not a drug trial or some crazy thing where you need like a thousand people involved in the experiment. All you need is a squat rack or whatever the implement you, you're testing and play. Don't have the anxiety of, of results. Don't have the anxiety, oh my God, like I'm going to be embarrassed because everyone's going to know I've squatted 500 days and I'm, I'm just an idiot. Screw all of that. It's you, it's the weight, it's your love of training. Put everything to the test and just see what you can come up with. Um, you might be surprised. You might be surprised because I think a lot of these assumptions in the fitness industry are, fl are blatantly false. Um, and a lot of these assumptions are based on people that are not like you and me. They are not professional athletes. They are not taking all these different uh, performance enhancing drugs they are not backed up by crews and physios and masseuses and best nutrition all of that they're not sleeping eight to ten hours every night these people are different and so if we take advice from olympians we might be screwing ourselves big time because these people are not real really they, they, they don't go to the job they don't do night shifts they don't have to do their you know lawns they don't have to clear their gutters they don't have to cook clean shower the kids bath their kids all that sort of stuff change nappies that these people don't do this so if you take advice from somebody that says to you, I reckon you should go 70 to 85% four days a week. I've been there, man. I've done that. And then my life was miserable. It hasn't worked for me. And you, you can say I didn't implement. You can say whatever you want. It shouldn't be that difficult. I shouldn't feel anxiety every time I step up to the freaking bar. That, I don't think that's an effective program. Anyway, what I'm saying to you is be brave. Experiment. Don't even take my word for it, man. I'm putting everything on example here right in front of you. But have the courage to experiment for yourself because you might be surprised and on top of all of that you might get st uh, stimulated mentally which is going to push you into the gym even more than the gains you see physically all right guys i'll catch you guys in the next one peace out